In this video, we're going to look at a couple of notable changes for Revit 2026 on the MEP side. The first one we're going to look at is how you now manage everything to do with electrical cables and sizes in Revit. Previously, this was done within electrical settings. Now, on the Manage tab, under MEP settings, you find everything to do with the management and sizing of electrical cables on the electrical conductor and cable settings here. Into the dialog box along the top you can see there's four tab pages. The one that we're on at the minute is the conductor details and in there you have the conductor materials, temperature ratings and insulation materials and these are familiar from the old way of doing it within 2025 and before. So you can see there with the conductor materials, we've got the, the tables on here, the materials. We've also got the, the reference method here. And these have kind of poured it across from 2025. Up here, we can add and delete ones that you don't want or ones that you do want. We've got our temperature ratings here. So again, we can add and remove any that we require or not. And it's the same with the insulation materials here. Moved on to the next page, we've got our conductor sizes. Again, we can add and remove. We have the diameter here. As you can see, there's no link or reference to any cable rating or current carrying capacity. If I'd like to add a new one, let's click on the add button here. And we can add the next size up. If you'd like to add in a square symbol on here, we'd have to use the Windows character map where you can copy and paste it in from here. So again, once I've added that in there, simple case of just pasting character in there and we can add it to the other ones as well. We need to start at the top. I'll leave it there for now. Again, adding in the diameter. The next page is the cable sizes. And this is where you can add all of the cable sizes that you require. And what you can do here is you can see in the columns for the live, the neutral, and the CPC or earth, you can map those cable sizes across. And as you can see, it's got the square symbol on there as well. Again, we can add and remove, but you can also duplicate cable sizes. So for instance, here, if I duplicate the four mil one, we can edit that one. I'm going to just change that to six. This is a single phase cable. As you can see, we've got the, the three phase one just down there. So you'd obviously have to, to create them as well. Then what you do is you just go along and can change the information as necessary. The next page is where you look at the actual cable types. Again, this is where you can add in your, your name. You can then map across the conductor material, temperature rating, and the insulation. And then just choose whether it's a, it's a multi-core cable or a single core cable. Again, you can duplicate any if you require. So for instance here, I could grab that one, duplicate it.
copy and just going to put a Y on this one. Keep the reference method as E. Again, because it's incremented the, the name, just need to change that back to 2. And again, we just check along to make sure the rest of the information is correct. Once you've created a, a cable type, you can then choose which cable sizes are going to be made available for this type. So again, on this one here, I'm just tick all of the single face size I have available at the minute. And again, the same for that new one that we just added. Clicking OK to save changes, we turn them back into the model. We can now select a, a pre-created circuit. And we can then look at the cable type. Once you've chosen the cable type, you should then be able to go down to cable size. And you should have all of the cable sizes specified. Again, choose the cable size you require and it's no longer driven by the the rating of the cable or the ampacity as it's once called the other notable change on the electrical side within revit is that that they can now use browser organization the panel schedules again as before you can right click on the header Go to browser organization. You now have your panel schedule option within here. I'm going to set a new one up. I call this one by level and phase. And then I'm going to go to grouping and sort and tap here. Again, as with the normal browser organization and for your schedules, we've now got some parameters that we can sort and group by. So as the name suggests, we're going to use level, and then we're going to do a number of phases. Clicking OK, we can then set this to be our current organization. Click OK. Moving back over to here, you can now see we've got our panels all grouped by initially by level and then by number of phases.